Yo, Dan Larson here. Welcome to the newest episode of Let's Synthesize. In this video, I would like to show you how to make this future based drop. I will only talk about this soft chord step stuff here because the rest of it is really about the drums and one arpeggio loop here. So it contains three layers. We have the regular saw layer. We have a bass layer and another bass layer. But first, without getting into the details, let me show you that I added a few effects to it and on their own they sound like this while well, all together they sound this so it's pretty bad so we had to make a few tweaks here and there but first let me show you the main saw pad which comes from Smith. it's a very very simple patch like always while well, most of the future bass Chord saw steps are pretty pretty easy to make. These contain two saw saw oscillators basically, with uh, one of these seven and the other one is on five unison voices. And I use a, just a pinch of comp filter to make the sound a little more interesting. It brings up some interesting tones and just a compressor rotate and some EQ to cut uh, cut down the lows and the highs because you know I will use uh, another uh, separate bass layer for that. So this is a sub layer, but never mind. This is not really important now. This is the sub. Uh, sorry, this is the saw filter, and it is a little in more interesting thing here that I use this dimension expander rack, which I gave out a few weeks or a few months later in in a previous Synthesize Sunday episode. So if you're interested and you haven't seen that, go and find it on my channel. I will drop a link below. You will find it easier, and it gives a pretty interesting tone to it, especially, you know, it expands stereo field really heavily, but it gives some more tone to it too. So this is the original without the rack. And with the rack. And another EQ just, you know, cut a little on the highs and on the lows again. And the limiter is not very important stuff. Let's check the very basic bass layer. It's another saw only with a noise and some distortion and some filter to cut out the lows again. Basically, I cut the lows and the highs at the same time because this is a multi filter with a low and a high pace filter. So I cut out the lows and the highs at the same time. It's most like a band paste filter, but it is more because I can set the band with this way. Uh, with a regular band paste filter, I, well, usually I cannot, and it is impossible to set the band with. But this way I can set the band with, so I can decide how much I want to cut the lows and the highs. So it is a pretty cool stuff here in Serum. So a very, very basic uh, uh, sound. And I have another bass layer, which basically gives the very characteristic of the sound. And this is an interesting thing because I made, well, I haven't finished it, but I started to make a dubstep tune and I took the main bass from it, which I made using FM8 and I imported it in Swarm and started to tweak it a little, but not too much, just a little. And this is the song. Okay, not this. So this is the main basis. Oh, wah, oh, wah. And here is the bass on itself. Something like that. It's not 100% accurate. I mean, it is not completely the same. I just exported 
one shot from it. And imported it in the serum. Let's see the stuff itself. Here is my beautiful growly sound. So what I did here is apply this asymmetric plus warp mode. This is the original sound. And I didn't do too much, I just added a hyper to, you know, spread the stereo field. A little distortion, not too much. Uh, high, well, it's a multi again, it's a high and a band pace filter at the same time. And I automated using this envelope the cutoff. I mean, the cutoff for the high and the cutoff for the band pace filter. With also an EQ peak. So, altogether, these effects, the filters, the EQ, and the wavetable position knob basically gives the movement to the sound. <laughs> As you can hear, without the filters and the EQ, it's just very flat. And the note is here at the end of the chain, of course, like basically always. Now, this time we have the main stack. And this time I had to think that, okay, this is pretty cool sounding, but it is very boring on its own. Let me show you that even with side chaining. It's just not very interesting and it, is, and it doesn't sound very cool. So I had to decide what to do and I, and just an idea came into my mind that why don't we start uh, like filtering the whole chain and the whole stack, not only the saw or the bass or something, but all together on a group. So I added the Serum FX here, which is a pretty nice tool to do this. And um, well, this is not too much here. I just tweaked an add bass filter here in Miscellaneous. This is an add bass filter. Let me show you what it does. Just let me unclick the, the rest of it, even the side chaining. So as you can see, this add bass filter cutoff plays a little on the highs. So adds a little movement to it. And then OTT brings back a little of that, of that uh, character while the filter just, you know, cuts out. It's a nice way to make the sound move, but don't lose too much character and too much highs with the OTT. Okay, so the next step was adding another Serum FX. And this time, the hyper and another OTT brings up the sound, brings up the highs and the tones to just push it into your face a little more. And I also use an EQ to cut out the lows because we really don't need that because OTT always brings up the, the, low, the low end of the sound too, not only the highs and the middles, but the bass too, bass part of the sound too. So I had to cut it out again. And now it's, it's, it's interesting, but some weird frequencies came out. So I had to EQ it again. I cut out the lows again and just push it up a highs a little. But there are some annoying frequencies. Well, basically, you always need to be really careful at around 5,000 hertz, 4, 5, 6, 7,000 hertz, because those are those paper distortion, noisy kind of uh, uh, frequencies. What, what you really need to take care of. They just it doesn't sound good in the mix, well, most of the cases, and you really need to take care of that, really. So this is why I use a cut or just, a, you know, or just decrease a little this, this frequency area. As you can hear, it's very annoying, like noisy kind of frequencies, but really need to take care and just, you know, just decrease it a little. And it instantly sounds a lot better. Okay, I had, this at, I had to do the same at around 300 hertz. <laughs> 
those middle basses are very annoying to, to the ear also. And I added back the middle little. Not too much, just a little, because this bass growly patch or preset, serum preset, uh, gives a very nice tone that I didn't want to lose, so I had to give it back this little uh, band on the EQ. And the highs again, as I told you before. And the side chain and, and the limiter at the end. I know it's not complicated, because basically Future Bass is not a very complicated style, sound design wise, but uh, in musical or just, you know, idea wise, it can be tricky. And I very enjoyed making this pack, especially because of this, you know, to find some good ideas. And I hope you will find my pack, my Future Bass pack, exciting in this way. It's a little jazzy and it contains some nice ideas here and there, uh, I believe. And uh, just very short, let me show you the, the sequel of this sequence. Where I just cut out all the bases here and I try to find another way to, you know, just continue this little loop. Or, well, this is not a loop, this is a song, a very short song. Using another serum FX where I use a different kind of filtering, which gives a different movement to the sound. And this is the sound itself, or the Serum FX plugin itself, which makes the sound itself, which is a normal BMG low 6 filter. And as you can see, an LE4-1 gives the stack, or the, this kind of arpeggiator kind of sound to the, to, the, to the loop, to the saw. With the reverb, it's not, not very complicated. It's just a simple sound. But altogether, I pretty like what I had. Let me show you from the beginning. And this little kit, what you hear, you can find in the pack, the whole stuff in the pack. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little overview and tutorial on this future bass tag chord stab stuff. So drop a thumbs up, drop your comment, share my videos, please. Bye bye.